far as I can tell, over the last 12 months, you have been busy building a studio. Is it finished yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been doing it for two years. I've been building it for two years, and it almost got finished before the first lockdown, and then it came to a standstill, like life itself. And then uh, I got it finished in November, so I've been in there since then. I'm kind of halfway through writing a new record. Yeah, I was going to say, does this mean we're now going to get two NG records every month or something like that? Possibly. Yes. Possibly. What's the best instrument that you have amassed over the years? I imagine you must have got some amazing stuff. Well, I've been given a few great guitar, and two in particular by my heroes. Uh, what are they? Who buy? Well, Johnny Ma, he gave me a Les Paul, which was from The Queen Is Dead. And I've got the Les Paul he wrote Panic on. Wow. And uh, Weller gave me the white and black Rickenbacker that he played absolute beginners on top of the pops. Wow. And uh, Weller gave me that for my 30th. Do you give your stuff to anybody? No. <laughs> <laughs> Weller's waiting for like the sideway guitar or something like that. <laughs> uh, well, actually, the, 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 uh, the guitar that Johnny uh, gave me that he wrote Panic on, uh, I opened it and like took it out of the case and immediately wrote slide away on it. No way. So, yeah, so it's got amazing history. It's like, like the Pulp Fiction briefcase yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We are here to talk business. Mm. The uh, Is it a best of or a greatest hits? I don't really know what they... It's a best of. Back the Way We Came, volume one. Yeah. Love the title. Yeah. Love the artwork on it as well, which is a subtle nod to the Bee Gees yes. best of as well, which is very nice to see. It looks yeah. vintage. It looks cool. Well, the title just came to me one morning at the kitchen table in lockdown, and I was thinking, this title must have been used before. You know, so I Googled it, and like, it's not. I couldn't believe that. And um, that first Bee Gees best of, which I've ripped the cover off, is one of my favourite ever records. And uh, we'd come up with an idea for the artwork, and it just happened to be there in my <clears throat> music room at home. And I was like, oh, no way, actually. Good idea. Talking about your tunes and the songs that are on this record, the the um, volume one, it's interesting listening to it because it's kind of chronological. There are a couple of bits where it's not. <clears throat> so you can really hear how your songwriting has changed mm. over the past 10 years. And what I got from it is that I think it's probably changed in the last decade more than it had in the previous two decades. Oh, yeah. Quite drastically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Oasis became such a brand and had such a strong musical identity that uh and only with hindsight now looking back on it it was quite a narrow set of uh ingredients you're taking from because we were stadium rock band blah 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 um and of course now you know there's nothing then I don't I don't even know what high flying birds is supposed to be musically it's just kind of whatever I feel like doing so can you write with a blank slate in yeah, your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Now, I do still write songs at home and bring them into the studio fully formed. But since working with David Holmes, he 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 kind of pulled that thing out of me where now I'm really confident of not having any ideas and just going into the studio and plugging something in that I can't play and just seeing what happens. I was trying to think, well, when did Noel's solo actually start? I was trying to pinpoint it. And I came down to the breakup statement that you put out the morning after Paris in 2009. Yeah. Because what that signified is the end of Oasis. There's no going back after that. Mm. And it makes it worldwide and everybody knows it. Yeah. And I think you signed that off by saying something like, I'll see you down the road somewhere. Yeah. So we know that something's coming yeah. next. I don't think anyone's really asked you about it. I, loved, I, didn't, I didn't write it. You didn't write it? No. I was on a... I, I was in such a fury and you know, it's a really stressful time and being the way that I am was prepared to walk away and say nothing and my management was saying you cannot say nothing to your fans and I was like there's nothing to say it's done and uh, I got on a I got on a flight and went to the south of France and then Sarah and the kids came over and by the time they'd got there they said well can you sign off on this and I was <laughs> like it? yeah my, my, someone in my office wrote it it sounds like you. Well, it do well. They know. They 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 know how I. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't. I didn't. I couldn't. If I was to sit and write that statement, it would have been enormously long, 
And I was just in such a, no, I'm done. I've walked away and that's it. Because that's where it starts. That's where you as a solo artist starts. There's yeah. no going back after that. Mm. And the interesting thing with you is you then take what seemed at the time like ages off, but actually mm. in hindsight, it was only about a year, that you seemed a little bit unsure mm. of yourself. Mm. And for me, as a long-time fan, seeing the person who was probably the most confident and brash person in UK music for the previous 18 mm. years saying, you know what? I don't know if I can pull this off solo. Well, yeah, I mean, I was being honest with myself. I think I knew the record was in the in 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 the canon of what I do. I knew that record was good, but I didn't know how it would get accepted, not by um, the music industry or whatever, but but like Oasis fans. I'd entered into the whole thing quite naively, and when it really when it really struck me was. Um, when I got to the O2 and sold out the O2, and I just I didn't enjoy that gig at all. I hated it. I hated the sound check and everything because I thought this is just too big. I don't I don't I don't want to be here. I I haven't got the salesman skills to pull this show off. All I've got is the songs. I just felt I hadn't earned it yet. It's like I was I was eight months into it and selling out the O2, and I was kind of looking around thinking, okay, this is massive. You know what I mean? And and people like Liam can pull off that kind of thing because. The, Charisma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, what, yeah whatever yeah. that thing yeah, is yeah, yeah. that they have, they can do it. Uh, and I didn't enjoy the gig and I hated the aftershock. Just everything about it was like it was a rotten night. I mean, you know, funnily enough, the gig was filmed for a DVD you know, as well. <laughs> Get it uh, now, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when did that change? Because surely you don't feel like that now. No, I'm still not comfortable in arenas because I don't have the chat, right? If I'm comfortable in theatres that's where my level is multiple nights in nice theatres that'll do me i don't really make arena kind of music you know what i mean i, I don't ever want it to become that thing where you turn up and go he, he'll get his new album out of the way and then we'll get into the classics the old go to the yeah, bar that would be just too thing. easy to do that i feel like the people expect more than and I've only got the songs. And my songs have to be twice as good as everybody else's because I'm not a great salesman. Um, so I often feel that people are wanting a bit more than they're getting. And I can't give it to them. Do you know what I mean? And um, so it was a struggle initially. But I guess there comes a point where you're just like, you know what? Okay. You know, this, this is what it is. David almost, he emailed me and said, do you want to hear something amazing that you wrote five years ago? <laughs> and I'm like, go on. And he'd taken this thing that we'd done that I could never finish off. And he thought it was one of the greatest things of all time. And I was like, it's not happening. And it bent his head. He was like, I can't believe you're letting this song go. I was like, I'm not feeling it. What did and it sound then, like? What was it? It was called Nervous Acid. Right, That was the working title. <laughs> Half of it I used for This Is The Place, not the chorus. But it was quite, it was a little bit slower, but it had some great, amazing lyrics. And anyway, he took it away. He's got, he's got a girl to sing it, this girl called Raven, who sings for The Unloved. It, amazing. And I was like, why didn't I think of that? Are you going to put it out under a different... Oh, absolutely. Thing? Yeah, he's coming to my studio. in, a, in a, I think he's coming in the summer to finish it off. Amazing. Yeah, it sounds great. But we did. That album had uh, 11 songs on it. We must have done 30 pieces of music. There's loads still left over. I mean, the stuff I'm finishing off now that we started for Who Built the Moon that's going to be on my next record. But you've got loads of stuff. You've got oh, the amorphous yeah. thing as well. You've got those, I read Record Collector where you said you found a bunch of Oasis yeah. demos, yeah. Eleanor Rigby. Yeah, punk version of Rigby and a great version. With singing of, on it as well. I, I think I was singing on it. I think That's mad. Yeah, it's uh, it's great. It's a real stomp. Ah, look at all the lonely I'd it's love to hear that. Put that um, out. Come but on. we had this... Uh, on the day that George Harrison died, we happened to be in the studio and uh, Johnny Marr happened to be there and we did this 12-minute version of It's All Too Much. There's no vocals on it. Liam never got to sing it. But we, we were, there was two drummers. I was drumming and Alan, Alan was drumming. We were drumming together. It's quite tribal. It's mega. Such a um, mad song, that, isn't it? When they bring in that line of, from Sorrow yeah. at the very end. You're like, it's, it's yeah, just it's crazy. crazy. But they're not coming out. This is They were originally planned for an Oasis another way is best of well, been shelled we're gonna do it? we're gonna do the best of the 2000s right. with like be all the b-sides 
so I think it was effective. It was a B-sides and unreleased stuff, you know, put together this track listing, sent it off to the other fella, came back, didn't like it, went back, didn't like it. In the end, I sensed that it was just going to be f***ing around for another year. So I said, you know what, Kim, oh, give us a shout a when you're happy man. with it. I love some of the B-sides around then. I love tunes like um, Sitting Here in Silence on My Own. Yeah. And I Just Dream. And what was that one on? Falling down. As what? Uh, Those I, swollen hand. Them oh, swollen, swollen and blues. Yeah, that's a great tune. Yeah, yeah. And there was uh, one way road was great. Yes, let's all make let's believe. Make brilliant. Some of Liam's stuff that ended up on B sides like Pass like, Me Down the Wine. Pass Me Down that's the Wine. A brilliant tune. And there was a f- obviously a few unreleased things, but I suppose it will come out eventually. Looking at 2021, um, even when you go back to 2011, things have changed so much since then in terms of the music industry mm. and the way people put music out now. Mm. I'm interested in this thing about songwriters selling their back catalogues mm. to publishing houses. And we've mm. seen it with Dylan has done it recently. And it's, Neil more Young. Hedge, it's more hedge funds, to be honest with you. Is it? Yeah. And the Chili Peppers were the first 90s band, as far as I can mm. tell, who've done it for an astronomical amount of money. Mm. I would imagine you've definitely been approached. Yeah. Do well, you well, have I, I, I get, any views I, on that? Well, I get mine back, all of it, in 2025. I've been knocking years off the deal as opposed to taking money, advances. I don't need money yeah. anymore. Yeah. I put it out there on an American TV show that was up for selling it. Did you? Yeah. And uh, I've, had a, I've had a couple of yeah strong offers. And uh, What does it actually mean, though? Does it mean that you don't own the rights to your song, so theoretically, Shaker Maker could end up yeah. soundtracking a milkshake out yeah, of yeah, or yeah, something? Yeah. yeah, it means that I'll be approaching 60. And it's like, do I want to leave it to my kids? You'll probably swap it for a playstation game um or do i get rid of it now and uh set everybody up for life it is a burden on the kids i kind of feel a little bit sorry for rock star kids from the 60s because it's like you've got to deal with all this stuff yeah because i've always wanted to buy a super yacht (laughs) and call it and call it you know you see them in the sea like and it's like ocean breeze i want to call my (laughs) mega mega white thing and like the biggest Super yacht of all time. Uh, you and Bono racing uh, super yachts in the south race of France. Bono's yacht around the south of France. Bringing uh, it back to music, hmm. Morrissey's on ASAP Rocky's new album. Get out. Apparently, not heard it. Wow. He's executively producing it or something like that, which wow. is mad. Just thinking <laughs> about that is yeah. mad. Yeah. Well, I did a track with Dizzy Rascal in lockdown. Did you? Yeah, that the, uh, has disappeared into the ether. Why? Uh, well, indeed. I saw him social in it. It'll come out at some point, won't it? Yeah, I'd have thought so. Out. I'd have thought so. I'd hope so. But the collab- yeah, the collaborative thing uh, is great <clears> if you can do it. And I don't really get asked a lot, you know. Well, when like, when when weird. he when when Dizzy called us, I was like jumped on it straight away because I was like it's about in time. You know what I mean? I'm amazing. But more people want to work with me. This is it. This is the advert. It's yeah. Right here. I would like to talk a little bit about Dead in the Water, which I know we referenced earlier on. It's such a beautiful song. Mm. And it, I think that's the only version that you've ever put out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you not record it properly? Because I I took my cue from Neil Young. It was never done a version of Hey, Hey, My, My, apart from the live version, ever. You're right. One of his best ever songs. Mad, isn't it? One of the best songs of my lifetime. And he's never recorded it. And I, I Oasis did a few gigs with him back in the day. And I said to him, why have you never recorded it? He says, I have recorded it. I said, yeah, but it's only live. He said, because it sounds better live. And with Dead in the Water, I actually went to record it a couple of times for this record. We're going to do the orchestra and the big thing. And actually, on one of the days when it, I, had a, I had a string arranged down and we're going to do all the thing and it was going to be amazing because it could well have been a single, blah, blah, blah. And then I woke up one morning and I thought, no, no. Think of Neil. That's, that's the version. I remember going to a gig and seeing Bruce Springsteen side of stage watching you, and I thought I had lunch with Bruce Springsteen about three or four years ago. Right, a mutual friend of ours. We're in Ibiza or uh, Formentera, and we're out in this restaurant, and somebody's phone goes. Um, I know Mick Jagger's kids, right? I know Jade Jagger, and she says phone goes, and she's like, she lives in Formentera. She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Bring whoever you want, and she she said, it's all right if my godfather comes for lunch with us and brings a few friends. I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, come on. Who's your godfather? Oh, Calvin Klein. <laughs> Got a pair of his undies on at the time, right? And uh, in the distance comes this massive fucking super yacht. And uh, like, Calvin Klein. And she said, yeah, she's bringing a few friends. Like, who's he bringing? She said, Bruce Springsteen. And wow. I was like, fuck 
off. Wow. And uh, so the, we're at the table with about eight people, and everyone's like, who's sitting beside Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> I was like, I am. <laughs> I fucking, wow. I'm not a massive Bruce Springsteen fan, but I love his big tunes, right? And honestly, we had the best four-hour chat about music ever. He was like, you're from Manchester, right? I was like, yeah, and he said, how about that fucking Stone Roses album? <laughs> and I was like, right. And he said, whatever happened to those guys? And I went, <laughs> let me pour you a drink and fucking tell you the whole sorry tale. He was honestly one of, the, one of my best ever meetings. This guy is a complete fan of music. And he was a proper dude. And he was saying to, at the end, because his book had just come out, and at the end he's going, he said, hey, man, you should write a book. <laughs> And I was like, no, nah, I don't know. And he said, you should write a book. He said, you got a lot to fucking say. Springsteen yeah, said Springsteen it. Yeah, Springsteen said it. Yeah, the I boss, think you yeah. should do it. Yeah. I didn't know, but it would be great. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, that's by the by. But wow. he was, uh, honestly, he was fucking great. You loved him. You got the Nebworth film coming out as well, which it's, has been announced now. Mate, it's fucking outrageous. I got really, well, not really, but I did get quite emotional watching it. Liam is at his absolute peak. Look great, great air, great clothes. Sound is amazing. But actually, standing back and watching it, I was like, you know, we were unbelievable. We could really, really play. And I was like, is that me playing the guitar? Because my guitar playing suffered a bit because now I'm just singing and strumming. I was on fire that night. I think that's the only thing missing from Oasis' back catalogue really is live stuff because you're so good live and there's so yeah, many yeah, iconic yeah. gigs going right up to Argentina in 2009 which yeah. is an amazing gig as well. Yeah. You should start putting that stuff out. We never we, we never, we never, lost the ability to do it live and but honestly when because they're interviewing fans at the time right? Right. And they've tracked those fans down now <laughs> who were all in their 50s and have all got kids and the crowd is really young so there's no one there for nostalgic reasons. You're all in. It's like it's your time. Now there's one guy who I mean I almost fucking choked up because he was saying, you know, me and my brother were there, and we could just see these two brothers. And there's a bit where we're just about on stage. I'm playing a guitar solo brilliantly, and Liam's trying to trip me up in the biggest gig of our lives, right? The biggest gig of all time at that time, and he's pinching me ass, and I'm kind of never dropped a fucking note. Unbelievable. But this guy saying, you know, and I see the two brothers and they were like me and my brother. And of course his brother's dead now and all that. And he's kind of going on and it, and it, and it really is kind of tugs at the heartstrings. But it's very real, your story. And even right up now, you know, all of your songs have this sense of realness to them. Um, and I think you will always have that. Well, they have, you know what? All the songs that had word, that had lyrics, they're all inclusive. It was all about us. And they were all about we. Mm. And... That's what I that's what I took from Acid House was like this is not an elitist thing these these songs are about us, and that's what has stood the test of time with the music because it's not that they can't tie the sentiment of the songs to a particular particular era. Well, it's about unity. And yeah, yeah, and and and, 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 and the anthems. Yeah, yeah, it? and they and they mean as much today <clears throat> as they did then to a new generation of kids. And I'd like to say I was clever enough to foresee that, but it wasn't. You know, it was just coming from somewhere that was pure. And wasn't thought out, and I guess it'll never die now. Um, but yeah, the the documentary is really, really great. Really, great. I'm so glad. And we the did gigs it. are coming out as well on streaming then. And, the, uh, and well, it's going to be in the cinema. <clears throat> it's going to get. Hopefully, people will be. I think people will be back in cinemas then. So it's going to be in the cinema, but then you'll be able to get <clears throat> the, the the separate gigs. Amazing. We got to wrap up now. I could talk to you. For like all day it's so good I mean you've got so many stories about so many great songs Back the Way We Came Volume 1 is out now thank you very much